Question 4 on this OCR Gateway P4 paper. This is for Gateway Additional Science or Gateway Physics. Some nuclear power stations use uranium-235. The graph shows how the activity of uranium-235 decreases with time. So as you see, activity is on the y-axis, time is on the x-axis. And as with all radioactive elements, the activity doesn't, in, doesn't decrease linearly. It decreases in this curve, and we know that curve is a half-life curve. And you have to be able to use the graph to work out the half-life of uranium-235. So don't get worried about what it is we're talking about, just any old half-life graph. You must draw lines on the graph to show how you calculated your answer. Now a half-life is defined as the average time taken for activity to decrease by half. So the time taken for activity to half. You must draw lines on the graph to show how you calculated your answer. And I stress that word, average time taken for activity to half. So to make an average, you need to have at least two readings from the graph. This is a two mark answer. Don't forget to draw lines on the graph as it tells you. Pause the video and have a little go. Okay, so if the activity started on a thousand, the first half life will be when the activity has decreased to 500. So you take your ruler and very carefully draw a dotted line or any line across to the trend line. And you can see this will meet the trend line here. Then you take that line down to the x axis and you can see it's just above 700 here. Right on the x axis, what that value was. I'm going to say something like 710 here. Then the next half-life will take place at 250, and be really careful here, 200 is there, that's 300, 250 is just there. Again, with a ruler, a dotted line along to the trend line. And then down to the x-axis. And you can see that comes out at 1400. So two half-lives took 1400 millions of years. So what we need to do to calculate the average is 1400 divided by two, which is 700 million years. Okay, that's the, the answer. The answer anywhere in the range 700 to 740 is acceptable here. Moving on to the next part then. Uranium is not used as a medical tracer because it's an alpha emitter. So we don't use uranium as a medical tracer. Medical tracers are radioactive elements that we put inside the body to analyse the flow of blood normally or sometimes to find a particularly active part of the body like a cancer, like a tumour. One of the reasons it's not used is because it's an alpha emitter. Alpha is the most ionising so we don't want it really inside the body. But you need to explain one other reason why uranium-235 is an unsuitable tracer. Uh, Pay attention to when they're emboldened words like other in this case. Do not talk. This has nothing to do with it being an alpha emitter. You've already been told that. That's not going to be the answer to the question. Think about what you know about uranium-235 from the previous part of the question as well. Especially as you see this is part two of part A. It's going to be linked in some way to the previous part. So pause the, the video, have a think about your ideas, and then play again to see the answer. Well, it's because it's got such a long half-life. Uranium's half-life is very, very long. It's in the millions of years. And what that means is that it would stay active for a very long time in the body. 
would stay active for your whole life, really, is, wouldn't it? And that could cause you some sickness. That could also cause other people around you some sickness as well, if you think about it. And actually, when they use medical tracers, they pick isotopes which have half-lives of only 24 hours or a week at most. Next part of this question then, part B. The activity of a nuclear material decreases when radioactive particles are emitted, so this is a incidence of radiation, a decay. This can be caused by the emission of an alpha particle. Complete the nuclear equation below to represent alpha decay of uranium-235 into thorium. And it tells you uranium is represented by the U. So that's the uranium over there. And thorium is represented by the TH. That's the thorium there. This is the alpha particle here. You do need to remember what an alpha particle is made up of and the notation for that. I'll tell you what it's made up of just now. An alpha particle is two protons and two neutrons. Okay, it is a helium nucleus, two protons and two neutrons. Have a little go and fill it in. Start by filling in the notation for the alpha particle, then try and balance out the two sides of the equation. It's just like that balancing idea in chemistry, but it's with subatomic particles rather than atoms. Pause the video now. Well, this bottom number is the proton number, so alpha has two protons. The top number here is the nucleon number. Nucleon number means total protons and neutrons. So if it's got two protons and two neutrons, it's going to have four nucleons. Now we need to do our balancing. So you do this in lines, so deal with the top line first and then deal with the bottom line. 235 is something plus 4. 235 is 2, 3, 1 plus 4. Now the second line, 90 equals something plus 2. Pardon me, 92 equals something plus 2. 92 equals 90 plus 2. So the top line balances and the bottom line balances. Those questions are really easy, guys, as long as you remember what the alpha particle or the beta particle is made of. Four and two, that gets you the first mark, and then the balancing part gets you the second mark. I'll just tell you, a beta particle, a negative particle, is an electron. It has the notation B, like that, beta with a long tail, so B with a long tail. It has a minus one as its proton number, which tells you it's negatively charged. And it is a, not a nucleon. It's not a proton or a neutron, so we say a zero uh, nucleon number. But the process is exactly the same. If you use that, you just balance the top line, balance the bottom line. Look at the data showing the sources that contribute to the average UK radiation dose. So rocks, cosmic rays, medical, from inside the human body, work-related or other. And it tells you the actual percentage contribution. You often see this represented as a, a pie chart. Stephen uses the data to conclude that rocks and cosmic rays are the only significant contributors to his radiation dose. So are they the only significant contributors to his radiation dose? We can see they're the most, they are the highest. This is almost in order 50, 25. Rocks and cosmic rays are definitely significant ones, but are they the only ones? Is this an appropriate conclusion? Explain why. It's a two mark question. So think first whether you're gonna say, yeah, it's appropriate, or no, it's not because you can actually get marks for either answer. 
So pause the video now, decide which way around you're going to answer this and have a little go. Well, if you say yes, then I'm afraid you're going to get one out of the marks. But yeah, they, they do contribute a large part. So if you say yes, and you then um, qualified that by saying yes, they add up to 75%, so therefore they are the significant part of the radiation dose. If you say no, then yeah, well done, you can now get two marks, but there's no marks for just saying no. Why no? Well, because the medical um, percentage is actually almost as much as the cosmic rays. So you can't really just ignore that. So you'd say the medical, and actually, the stuff from inside the body is almost 10%. It's almost as much as the, the other two. It's almost as much as the cosmic rays. They're not much smaller percentages. They're, yeah, they're smaller, but they're not insignificant. And then lastly, you can say, well, it told you above, this is the average contribution. So actually, if you worked in a hospital, maybe this percentage would be higher. So it depends on what you do. And actually, if you fly, then this percentage cosmic rays will be higher as well. Or maybe you live in an area where rocks are more radioactive. So. You have, it, it is the case that not everyone will have only 15% from medical. So medical could be more significant than this. So you would say no, the data is average. Uh, sorry, that's terrible. Uh, the data is average, maybe he works in a hospital. Or maybe he works with radiation. And there are loads of different jobs that you could put as examples of that. You could say he's a radiographer, that's the people who do the scans in hospitals. You could say he works in a nuclear power station, therefore his work related would probably be higher. Um, you could say he maybe works on weapons tests. There's loads of different examples, but also, if you're particularly ill, then maybe you have more medical scans than other people. So that's another example you can say where that might be on average quite a low um, contribution to radiation dose, but it could still be a significant contribution. Okay, let's move on to question five.